Diane Naidung Nursi is a specialist in the field of public relations and corporate communication, but she is also committed to promoting sustainability and social enterprise. Karusha met up with Diane to find out why environmental matters aren't just a middle class luxury. Dynamic Diane Naidung Nersi could be described as a PR practitioner who specializes in matters with an environmental and community connection. But this doesn't begin to convey the passion and energy that she puts into every minute of the working day. Diane believes in practicing what she preaches, and it's typical of her approach that she hosts a radio show in a studio that's actually a repurposed shipping container. She and her guests were wrapping up the discussion of green issues and the brain's ability to reshape its own neural networks when Karusha arrives. Today I'm spending time with Diane Naidu, who is the founder of Greenovation South Africa. Now if you didn't know, the word green refers to anything renewable and sustainable. And Diane's been in the green industry for over 20 years. 55 million voices. We're using ours. Use yours. Hi Diane! Hi! It's so nice to finally meet you. Yes. Tell us how you came into this green world. Well, my love for green starts really with my love for telling stories. And I think since I was a very young little girl, I always wanted to live a life of purpose and live a life of meaning. And people often think that going green and living green is about trees and plants and the rhino, when it really is about people. My favorite quote comes from Kumi Naidu, and he says that the planet will replenish itself, that we as human beings, we will be gone. So the fight is not really to save the planet, it's to save us and to save us probably more from ourselves than anyone else. What about your childhood and your upbringing do you think has inspired your journey to where you are today? I was introduced to critical thinking at a very young age. Probably one of the most important people who had a big impact on my life was my history teacher, Mr. Govinda. Our school was politically active. We had our schools tear gassed. We had police raiding our schools, but he was always like, you've got to stand up and be counted. But I think the important thing is that there are 55 million voices in South Africa I'm using mine. Use yours. Other than the radio station, what other platforms are there? Green news doesn't really make news. It's only if it bleeds, it leads. So what I decided to do was I was going to create my own channels, create my own platforms. From the show, we create podcasts and we share that across our networks. We have a magazine which is not only in print, it's also available online. So we are able to share content. What do you think your advice is for somebody like me who would want to be sustainable in my everyday life? Well, simple things like being cognizant and being responsible about your use of water in the home. Don't keep the tap running when you're brushing your teeth. That's quite a simple thing. You could install energy efficient light bulbs. And perhaps because you're always in front of the camera, you could actually invest in sustainable fashion. So what I'm wearing right here, right now, is sustainable fashion. It's edgy, it's vintage, it's completely ahead of the curve as far as I'm concerned. But this has been sourced locally. I can take you there now. I would love to go. That's incredible. Let's go. Diane's studio is located in a venue that has thousands of Josie residents clicking the like button thanks to the innovative and inventive ventures that are to be found there. This includes designer Palisa Mokubeng's retail outlet for her funky urban ethnic creations with a focus on sustainability. Yeah. So Karusha, this is one of my favorite pieces of, from Palace's last collection. And the great thing about it is that this is repurposed, upcycled fabric from offcuts, from other designs and other collections that she's put together. So for me, sustainable fashion is about a lot more than the fabric dyeing and the water that is being used. It's about using absolutely everything that you've got. I know for myself and a lot of consumers, when we think reused or reusable and sustainable. We don't necessarily think fashion forward, but I mean, this is an incredible collection and it's so on trend at the moment. So I think the question then is, how do we as consumers know if what we're buying is sustainable? For me, sustainability is about people. So it's about the people that work in these spaces. Their working conditions, is it fair? Is it reasonable? Is it decent? Is it livable? What people might not know is that I do not wear any fashion brands. I don't even buy from the retail stores. I support local brands. We are not going to grow our economy sustainably if we continue to support these big brands who quite frankly don't need our money 
at all. I know many South Africans, myself included, would love to support our local economy and our local designers. Buying local is cool, it's awesome. At least I know I'm playing my part. And I know you are also involved in the youth and the empowerment of the youth in bringing sustainability into their lives at a young age. For me, it's really important that we get young people to start thinking sustainably, not only about the planet, but about their businesses, about their livelihoods, about how they survive on this earth. But I think the best way for me to demonstrate it is to show you one of the projects. That sounds incredible. I'm so excited. Let's go. Let's go. The Green Ovation Initiative saw Diane's PR company team up with private sector partners and the World Life Fund South Africa to stimulate green innovation in our country and to recognize achievements in this field. Sustainability and food security go hand in hand and a community garden and education center was among the award-winning projects showcased by Green Ovation. So Karusha, here we have a vegetable garden and a bit of a herb patch. And I think in terms of passing on our knowledge, and leaving a legacy behind. A big part of it is going back to our roots, where young kids are able to come through and learn how to plant their own food, how to grow their own food. And right behind me is kitchen concepts, where they actually teach kids how to take what they've grown and convert it into a meal. Beyond the cooking classes, they teach them how to recycle the waste. Beyond that, they teach them how to use waste, how to recycle or possibly upcycle waste to create products, whether it's necklaces or beading or money tins. Again, that's teaching them how to create a business out of it. What is your advice to moms or to families that want to start going green in their home? I think people often think that it's got to be a big gesture, it's got to be a grand gesture. Make a start, whether it's the little packets that you buy, seed packets, or the little saplings or the seedlings, just start somewhere. And Diane, of course, growing your own greens as opposed to just buying them from the grocery store encourages family time and together time. For me, it's, it's a really fun way to get young kids to start thinking about not wasting as much. It's the human consumption patterns, right? Because we are so convinced that everything needs to be new, everything needs to be fresh, everything needs to be big. It doesn't have to be. We can go and support the local person who is growing vegetables. And it's those small gestures that really are the big gestures, isn't it? Thank you so much, Diane. It's been such a pleasure. It's been so great chatting to Mella at last. I've loved every minute of it.